with 18 minutes to go. That's how it's finished here at the city ground. 23,830 were here at the start. Not that many were here at the end as Forrest lose again and remain on one point for the season after seven matches. Forrest nil, Middlesbrough two. Colin Frey, Steve Hodge, thank you more to come from them on BBC Radio Nottingham. This is David Jackson on Match Night. We will get reaction as soon as we can for you from here. Uh, Colin Frey will head pitch side to uh, get that for you. Uh, we'll talk more with Steve Hodge and we'll go live on the BBC Nottingham Sport Facebook page uh, very shortly as well. You can always tweet your thoughts at BBC RNS. Um, I think I can probably guess what the majority of the comments are going to be concerning. Um, so get your comments in, whether it be on Twitter at BBC RNS or uh, on Facebook as soon as we uh, uh, get live on there. Uh, elsewhere tonight uh, in the Champions League, still playing at Manchester City. Manchester City 5, RB Leipzig 3. Uh, an astonishing uh, game. Jack Grealish among the scorers. Cancelo uh, there as well, uh, making it 4-5-2. and five, two, But uh, the Germans have pulled it back to 5-3, incredibly. And the Liverpool-AC Milan game, some topsy-turvy match there. Liverpool taking the lead, a goal that in the end has been uh, classed as an own goal. Two goals in three minutes before half-time, putting uh, Milan ahead. And then Mo Salah and Jordan Henderson after the break. They're almost at the end of that one. Liverpool 3, AC Milan 2. Elsewhere in the Championship, Fulham 4-1 winners at Birmingham. It's finished Bristol City 1, Luton 1, Coventry 1, Cardiff 0, Stoke Barnsley's finished 1-1 one, one, and Swansea Millwall 0-0. Uh, nil, nil. Uh, we're live then on the BBC Nottingham Sport Facebook page. Uh, join us there and uh, tweet at BBC RNS as well. It's David Jackson here on Match Night from BBC Radio Nottingham, 13 minutes to 10. David Jackson here, Manchester City have just scored a sixth. Gabriel Jesus on 85, Manchester City six, uh, RB Leipzig three. Um, uh, some early comments in then. Uh, David says the board should resign. They're a disgrace, clueless, the lot of them. Stephen, the board needs to take the plunge before it's too late to rescue the season. Uh, Mark, he's got to go now. Unfortunately, the team are flat, have no ideas, far too slow passing. Uh, only try when they're behind. Richard, absolutely gutting, heartbreaking to see Forrest this low. Stephen, awful, zero positives. We have no hope. Uh, Mark, how much longer? Surely it's time. Uh, Carl, something has to be done now. Enough is enough. Uh, Sahil says the players are not playing for the manager. Luke, we are going down. We are going down. Um, Steve Hodge, it, it, it is surely difficult to see. Um, it, it's difficult to see really how any manager could survive the list of results, uh, regardless of any extenuating circumstances that people might want to bring up. The, re the run of results... Um, seven at the start of the season, one point from seven games, 13 matches without a win, two wins in 21 if you want to go a little bit further back beyond that. It's hard, isn't it, to imagine any manager surviving a run of results like that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think that's a fair comment. Um, Chris is not stupid, he'll know that he probably, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how close he is now to getting the sack, but that performance really... Um, might tip things but in saying that we mentioned pre-match I don't think it's obviously results is the, the be-all and end-all but it's also what we're seeing and it is I mean I've mentioned this in play at the first in the first half that we were going side to side side to side and, and now again you see Joe and you see uh, McKenna on the ball but it seemed fearful to put the ball into into fearful into into risk areas and, and they wouldn't trust Garner to get on the ball or, or a midfield player like Zinkanago who, who drifted in from the wide areas to get on the ball and get half turned they seemed scared to do that. It was it was a bit of fear involved, and then they played safe and they came out again, and they went left or right again, and Middlesbrough just dropped in, and they were happy where they were, um, because that's how they were going to play tonight. They got one or two injuries tonight. They got a really, you know, I, I think a probably average squad, but um, from from Forest point of view, no. I mean, Chris, you, you know, I, I'd be amazed if he survives. I really would because you know six out of seven defeats at the start of the season when you've had the window to deal with it. Um, and it, it doesn't look like it was a very good window. I think even looking at it from the outside, it didn't look like a great window. Um, and results so far, four straight home defeats, um, is a perilous place to be really for a manager. And, you know, he's, he's, he's been, I think he's probably 62 now, Chris, and he's not had many seconds in his career, but this will probably be as low as he's been in terms of, I, I imagine, his results and constant results and a team lacking, lacking flair, lacking goal scorers, and a team that's back now looking fragile at the back. And obviously those two things combined, 
are going to make you really, really vulnerable and, and we are being punished. And the, say Middlesbrough weren't playing great tonight, but they did things properly and they found some inspiration and a, a striker who scored a great goal. Uh, they made no mistakes at the back, hardly any I can think of in that game. They, they brought people down when they had to do that on the halfway line. Johnny House turned one to Matt Crooks in the second half, got yellow, prepared to do that. But all in all, professional performance and, and then they, they wait and they just say to you, come in, if you can, come and get the equaliser, but we're taking a 1-0. At worst, we'll take a 1-1 and then you give them a present, and that is game over. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of summed things up a bit, didn't it, really? I mean, it, it, Ethan Horvath, you, you kind of have sympathy for in, in, into the team for the first time in a league game tonight. Um, it, I thought it, in the early stages, getting some early touches and getting down and coming out and taking a good catch from corner and sort of looking all right and building his confidence and settling in. I mean, but, but that second goal, that was just an absolute disaster. Well, it was for him, yeah, and he had a few in the first half where he got a cuff from Joe Worrell and he, he was composed on it. He didn't want to look like he was a, a panic merchant tried to pick a pass out to the left wing to Max Lowe a few times and in all honesty he didn't do a lot wrong in the first you know until that happened really his kicking was decent he came out for crosses there was a couple low down which, which handled really well I thought you saw twice in the first half Hernandez got by uh, Umbeso and, and zinged in a couple of low crosses and he kept hold of both of those with good you know good uh, safe hands so all in all I don't think he did a lot wrong and he'd be remembered for that that mistake but as a manager, it's got to come out and defend him and say, yes, obviously the whole world can see he made a mistake, but I think you're saying general, I thought he did pretty well because he's got to back up his decision that he made to put, to put him in the team in the first place. Mm. But for a manager who's, who's trying to hang on to his job at the moment and to make a big call like that and then that to happen, that compounds everything that, that's happened tonight really with the, the one big call you've made tonight um, has let you down obviously he's not meant to let him down but he's let him down and the second goal kills the game off because that's the thing isn't it you know you look at uh, from Chris Hewitt's point of view he looks at the team that he put out um, at the weekend and they've started okay they've been bullied really and beaten by a bigger team once they brought Kiefer Moore on in the second half and they've, they've ended up losing that game they've started today okay but he's he's made these changes I know one of them was enforced at right back and he wouldn't ordinarily have wanted Lower Kumbay so there but he's made the big call to change his goalkeeper and then at the end against a team who hadn't won in four before tonight and he weren't an exceptional championship side they've been pretty comfortably beaten and that yeah. that does, does that just show really where Forrest are or is that just kind of symptomatic of where Forrest are under Chris Hewton if you like and, and that maybe it's just, you know, it's just going to have to change. Um, I'm thinking back a long time now. I think even Sudbury at the end of his tenure, we were pretty toothless then, if I remember. So this is this is not a, you know, a Chris Hewton only thing. I think I think Lamushi had a, a real bad time at the end of his tenure here, and we were we were poor to watch, and we couldn't score goals, and it was just it was just not good enough. And you, you could see, to be fair, that. Uh, you know, the strike force we had at the back end of last season. Well, the stats last season tell you we were second or third lowest scores in the league. So, And we brought in a kid from West Ham who scored one goal, if, if that, in his career. So, Doesn't look like a looks, striker, does he? I mean, well, he looked look sharp at times. He got by down the sides a few times, but his two shots he had were, were somebody who was either rusty or didn't know how to shoot or was just thinking, I'm going to shoot from anywhere because I'm pleased to be here. I'll try and get a goal because we're losing 2-0. Um, he just slashed at a couple and they looked awful, to be fair to him. Um, and there is some way, sometimes there's a way to shoot and a way to miss, not as he did where you hit the corner flag uh, with one of them, certainly. Um, but no, there's, 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 we know there's lots wrong, lots, lots wrong. Both ends of the pitch, uh, a poor window, uh, team lacking confidence, a style of play that doesn't really, I don't think the players enjoy. And trying to play out from the back, I think sometimes the, the players are, are fearful of, of what's ahead of them. Uh, and don't want to give it to these players in midfield or the wide players, but certainly there's there's a, the attacking threat is is as it was last season, it's just zero at the moment. Um, and, and Chris Hewton has said, you know, they tried to sign a striker um, on on deadline day and and ultimately didn't get one. But every time Forrest tried to get the ball up through the middle up to Lyle Taylor, it came straight back. He was either closed down by one or two, or it was miscontrolled, or he's tackled. They didn't get any joy from that. They they were all right, you know. They got more success when they went down the wings, be it. Zinkenagel or low down the left who did really well getting forwards Brennan Johnson in down the right especially at the start of the second half they had some luck but but who are Forrest who else have they got to call upon you see Middlesbrough bringing well, on a big lad <laughs> in, in, in Nick Pizzi you see Cardiff bringing on Kiefer Moore off the bench at the weekend a player like Kiefer Moore off the bench yeah. and you look at what what have Forrest got I don't know I don't know how Chris and the new director of football work together I said pre-match that 
Chris would have known Max Lowe and probably Xander Silva, certainly Jed Spence. But the other three, Ajeda, uh, Dreger, and is it Eli or R- R- Rodrigo Eli? Yeah. Eli, yeah. Those three, um, I assume, would have been the CEO, new CEO's uh, remit. The the CV on those three players, well, the right back from Olympic Arcos, will, I assume, would be a freebie anyway. Uh, and I love the stats. He's played eight games for them in his career, so he's hardly a mainstay. Yeah. And he's coming to the, into into this championship football, which is which is a hard you know a hard place to be. A Jada has, has got one cap for Paraguay, and he's got 17 career appearances. And that's not hardly a player going to I don't think change the course of this season for us. And I don't think Christine would have known him. So how those two are working together, I don't know. Will Chris be looking at you know these players thinking, well I don't fancy you, I don't fancy you, I don't know you. He said pre- in that interview you've actually mentioned. He said we're looking at players and seeing their strengths and weaknesses. And I was thinking, well, you should know them. You should be asking. You should be. You should be going to training every day, looking at players, thinking, what's he good at? What's he? What can't he do? Because are they not he's the already at the football hints, club. Though? Are they not the subtle hints from Chris Uton though that 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 he hasn't single-handedly been able to make these signings? And actually, from the from the chairman and the chief executive's point of view, one of their main objectives, so looking at this from 12 months ago, was saying, right, the wage bill's too high, the age of the squad is too high. What we need to do is offload those. And if you look at the 18 players who've gone in the summer and the 10 that came in, the wages will be lower. The average age of the players that left was 30 the average age of the players they brought in was 23 Chris Hewton is then saying things like quite often I've got a younger squad I've got to work out what I've got I've got to see the squad's capable of competing but how good it is at competing we need to wait and see at the moment it's that he hasn't come in been back to bring in the players that he wants to bring in um, and, and and then build that squad. You could argue maybe he was a little bit at first, he got his knockout, he got the Glen Murray players like that and, and they didn't exactly you know, perform to the level that, that he would have wanted them but to he did. Chris, I thought Christie did. No, He was decent. Yes, he, Christie. He, he'd come in but you know, so but in terms of this summer, in terms of the change this summer with the new chief executive, that's what th- I'm saying. Th- that that isn't Chris Hutton hasn't had that, has he? That's it? what I'm saying. It's the quality of the play you're bringing in. Cyrus Christie's an experienced player at this level, knows it off by heart. I'm not saying he's a will-beater, but he's a good player at this level. Luke Freeman got an injury. That was unfortunate, to be fair to him. Knockout was a disappointment, but somebody you could see where worth a go because yeah, yeah. on his day he can produce something. It didn't happen for him. James Garner was a was a positive. So if Garner Absolutely. was a positive, Christie was a positive. Knockout was a was a. See how he goes, and Freeman got injured. In general, they were players he brought in that he knows in this league can cope with it. Now two came off, two didn't. So that, that's not too bad to be fair. And defensively, last year we had Ribeiro at left back a lot, and then um, McKenna, Worrell, and Christie. Christie at right back, and the keeper was in form then. So that back four was pretty decent. So that back four today was no Samba, no right back, no left back. I think left back to fair, much like I quite like him. The two centre halves at the moment, are the two remaining from last year, but I don't see a window that enhances one iota. I think the players left at the football club are some of my good players, but on too much money, and you know it's not their fault they're on three-year contracts because the club happily signed them, you know, when they both agreed it. So they've all been moved on, and to bring the squad down to a younger age, I agree with. But it's what you bring in and where you bring it in from, and how it can affect you on the pitch. And Chris is saying on your on your recording. Um, I'm looking at players as we train at the strengths and weaknesses. Then, then he, yeah, you're probably right to say he's probably saying I ain't sure about this kid because I don't know him. So I've got to just watch in training and then I'll put him in when I can do. But I'm, I'm actually learning on the job myself. Which for a manager, you know, as I say, he's brought in Max Lowe, who we'd know, uh, and Jed Spence. But the other, the other lot, to be fair, you know, that's why I have some sympathy in that regard that these players he doesn't know. So is he being obviously? ridden over by the, the the new guy at the top and these players have been you know just given to him for to get on with it but i've seen on their bench tonight and the guys from uh, middlesbrough were saying to us there's a guy called martin payero he's an argentinian and he's got something like 37 appearances in his career he's 23 and no one really knows much about him so there are these odd ones that come like the paraguayan guy from nowhere which has to do with i think obviously above with agents throwing people around doing people's favors but from our point of view, the uh, you know, I thought Maxwell was decent tonight. I think I think he's a good player. I think he's still very young, but he's a good player. I thought Johnson was in the second half really good at times and causing no end of problems. Um, I thought he was the best player for us tonight uh, by a street in terms of speed, delivery into the box, uh, intensity of play uh, on the front foot. It looked like he wanted to win. I'm sure they all did, but he looked like he wanted to win or to get us back in the game by his endeavour. But around that, 
Garner, who I think he's obviously a very good player, was just lost in the in the style of play that we were playing, which was slow, laborious, um, lacking intensity and speed. Um, and when we got up front, obviously, Taylor isn't the quickest, Graben isn't the quickest, and, it, and that, John, Johnson's the only one with pace up there. Is that what comes from the manager? Well, the style of play is, yeah, certainly. Um, we, had a, we had a spell in the second half when the crowd were on the back of the plays, but they kept it, to be fair, and passed it around for about 30 passes, and we drew a free kick. But the, the crowd are not interested then. When we're losing 1-0 one, one or 2-0 at the time, whatever, whatever it was, they don't want to see that, really. But that's where, as a manager and the players, they've got to be strong and say, this is how the manager says we've got to play. No matter what the score is, but this is our style of play. Um, you know, I know other managers like Bielsa at Leeds, they, if they're losing 4-0, that it stays the same. That's how they play week in, week out. So... If that's the way he wants to play week in, week out, then the players are producing then results, then he has to get better players to produce better results. Yeah. Otherwise, he can't get any better players, can he? It's too late now. now. The, the, the window's closed. So Absolutely. Is it, is it just going to need a change of somebody who's going to come in, change that, try and spark something now? Is that Because otherwise Forrest... Who? Is it the manager? Do, 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 do the board need to look at this and say, well, look, if it's not going to work this way, you can't just keep producing the same thing week after week and, and losing game after game, can you? At some point you'd think something has to change and if it's not going to change under the uh, under this manager and he's had two home games here that you felt were two big home games which they've lost both of them um, you know and he's talked a lot about small margins but then the margins are getting a bit bigger they've lost by two tonight well maybe but, maybe he was giving no players no no scope because they know he's on rocky ground and they, and they just thought well we're not going to spend a shed load on players if, if we don't really fancy you we're going to see how it goes with you we'll give you a couple we'll give you Max Lowe and we'll give you Jez Bentz but apart from that we'll see how you go you, you've got to turn it around now uh, maybe that's the thinking hmm. but obviously the owner's I don't know two or three thousand miles away in Athens so you see the league table again tonight and the Risky result though, isn't it? I mean when given last year that you know they, they didn't you know they finished pretty low up the table um, last year weren't scoring many goals and then in the summer they've not ended up you know strengthening the squad well enough in, in, well, in order I, to compete I, much better. I don't understand and, it. And, and the, the argument is to, to reduce the wage bill and, you know, to buy players who maybe the, the club can invest in now and maybe, so, you know, and that this is going to be a longer-term plan and his programme notes the other night, the Chief Executive, Dave Murphy, was talking about that this is going to take several windows before you see the benefits of it. But it's, it's no good if they go down this year, well, is this, it? We had this conundrum, um, we talked about it, I don't know, I think it was at Derby, where it was just before deadline day and, we, and we, me and Colin were talking about it and, we, and I said then that, the board have got a decision to make now. Either they sell Joe Worrell for, you know, if somebody was offering you seven, eight million for him on the table, would you take that? And, and you'd, you'd get in, like you see Chef, you bought Morgan Gibbs White in on a loan fee from, from Wolves and he scores two, or whatever it is in the first two games. That kind of striker, like Rian Brewster was, at, he's Chef, you now, he was at Swansea a few years ago. That, that was the decision. Do they, do they sell Brennan Johnson? Do they sell Joe Worrell and make the team a better, stronger squad with firepower? And the, the decision was, no, we'll stay with what we've got. We'll give him so-and-so. And that's why we all watched the transfer deadline and thinking, well, they're going to have to put some rabbits out of the hats here to, to impress the fans because no one's gone out. Mm. And Carvalho's come back and Johnson's come back from their loans and everybody stayed on, on good money. So something's got to give somewhere. And at the moment, it's given on the pitch in yeah. the results. Well, they, they haven't won us since April the 5th. That was the game here against QPR when, when they scored three. That was also the last time they scored more than one in a game. I mean, the, the need for a striker was obvious. For whatever reason, they haven't been able to, whether it was cost or, you know, whatever else it was, the players that they wanted uh, weren't available. Who knows? But uh, a few other comments to, to read through. Four minutes past ten on BBC Radio Nottingham. Sam says, Warnock's a wonderful manager at this level. Based on team spirit, he and his management team rise uh, teams to raise their games. Polar opposite to what we have in our dugout. Uh, Simon, I was sold my season ticket under false pretenses. I thought it entitled me to watch competitive football. Chance would be a fine thing. Uh, Dabo says, total show Shambles from top to bottom. Players aren't good enough. Nowhere near. Uh, Reese, League One, here we come. Gavin, so predictable as usual. Uh, David, to call that football is contravening the Trade Description Act. Uh, John, uh, I'd like to know what they do in training as the team hasn't got a clue how to do anything. A group of players who would get in most teams, yet they can't pass two passes together. Uh, Richard, two wins in 21. We're poor all over the pitch. No apparent quality anywhere. I'm afraid even against a very average Borough side. Uh, Tom, we have no identity as a team. No desire. We get bullied uh, with a manager who cannot solve the problem when you end up with um, a situation where the fans are sh the forest fans are shouting at their own manager you're getting sacked in the morning where uh, after most fans have gone you've got a couple of fans shouting and screaming at the top of their voices at the board when it's when it's gone that way surely there's no other way out 
you know, if you're on a board, don't you just think at that point, how much longer can you stick with a manager when it's turning like that, when you're hearing the own fans chant like that at the manager loudly? You know, this isn't one or two. This is a lot of supporters. You could hear it around the ground. When mm. it goes like that, do, uh, do, that must swing a board, mustn't it? It would certainly not help the manager's cause when the board are getting shouted at like that by by uh, irate people, like 10 yards away from where they sat down below them at the end of the match. And there were thousands of seats, I don't know, after about 85 minutes, thousands of seats available. Uh, yeah, it's bound to affect things. And, you know, the decisions now are going to be made. You would, you would assume that there'll be lots of talking tonight between here and Greece uh, with the owner. Um, it's a situation where... You know, I think everybody thinks things are going to happen. I mean, there's, I think there's four games between now and the next uh, England game, next break. But, you know, Huddersfield away now at the weekend and then Millwall are here. And, you know, just, you, you don't really think, you don't see too many positive signs to get us anything in those two games, really. Millwall probably will bully us and Huddersfield have proven recently that they've got some talent. So, uh no, when you listen, when you're bottom of the league, you've got one point from seven, and you've conceded, I don't know, twelve or thirteen in in six or seven games, um, and your strike force is pretty pretty average at this league. Um, you've got a lot of problems ahead of you, and um, we've seen many managers sacked. Sabri Mamushi went after four games this time last year, not not six or seven games. So, if this owner stays true to form, then uh, Chris is very 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 close to being out the exit door. Yeah. And um, we will see if that's what happens. It's seven minutes past ten. Neil Warnock's just been out and chatting for uh, an awful long time with the media. All smiles after uh, a victory this evening. Um, no sign of Chris Hewton just yet. Um, as soon as he does come out, of course, you will hear him on uh, BBC Radio Nottingham. Chris Hewton is headed pitch side. Uh, sorry, Colin Frey is headed pitch side. You'll hear from Chris Hewton when, uh, uh, as and when we can get him. The other thing is, Steve... Why would Chris Hewton want to stay in this job? You know, he's 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 got a great track record as it is, and he's, um, you know, he's in his early 60s now. He's um, uh, had a year that's just not worked out for him. He's standing there getting, um, you know, fans of his own team chanting at him, wanting him out. What? Why would you want to stay in that situation? He hasn't got anything to prove in management. No. So pride, what? pride. Um, some managers have a, a belief that one game can turn their careers and change things completely but with, with a set of players I don't think anybody really could change things that much uh, but in terms of, of Chris yeah he got a mention for this week in the papers for the, the Ireland job when they were struggling recently obviously he's a, obviously a well-known Irish player so I think uh, in terms of his career you don't want to kind of if he can leave here on a real bad spot really but in terms of things obviously it's getting worse and worse week by week so I don't know where he goes from here really but you know as I say um, in terms of the, the way the team are playing at the moment, then things have been very, very poor. And I think we're all sat here tonight thinking this could be the end of the road, possibly. Yeah. Uh, Steve Hoist, thank you for the moment. Let's uh, head pitch side and, uh, and talk to Colin Frey. Um, given the run of results, I mentioned to uh, Steve Hodge earlier, Colin, very few managers you would think could survive the run of form that, that Forrest have been on. Um, did it feel to you, does it feel to you like... Um, tonight or this week after this game uh, we we may be looking at a change in manager here well there are rumors already uh, starting to uh, to sweep the city ground uh, that uh, the decisions are, are being made as we kind of speak really we're still waiting for for Chris Eaton to come out here obviously while we're waiting for interviews we're, we're trying to find out exactly what the the latest situation is um, and whether or not those decisions have been made the last I've heard a couple of minutes ago is that what we're being told here at Pitchside is it's business as usual at the moment, um, but I'm aware of reports that are coming from outside the city ground from people who are, are not here tonight that the decision has already been made and that, and that Chris Hewton is uh, is set to leave. So we can't stand that up just at the moment. Um, we're being told that it's business as usual here in terms of waiting for an interview. Um, whether that change over, changes over the next few minutes, we'll, uh, we'll obviously wait to see, but um, it it kind of has that feel that, that we might have reached the end of the road tonight. Um, we saw the anger of the fans towards the end, just a couple of fans, but I'm sure that was probably voicing the anger of many of the supporters. Many, of course, had left before the uh, the end of the game. Um, and it's another night, really, that, that kind of sums Forrest up over the last few months. Um, the last win was at Easter 
it's been a long time, 13 games now, worst run since 2003, um, and it, it sort of felt the way the night fizzled out from the t you know bright start to the second half, but from certainly from the uh, the mistake that led to the second goal onwards, it, it sort of fizzled out. And um, as uh, as various colleagues have, have mentioned to me down here, it, it just it looks like big trouble from yeah. from Forest in terms of not not just in terms of Chris Hutton tonight, but it, but in terms of Forest for this season, they look as if they're in big trouble. Yeah, it, it felt a bit different tonight, didn't it? You know, if you go back a couple of games when everybody was talking about Chris Hutton's future before the Derby game and then the improved second half performance at Derby to get that draw when you felt there was there was a lot there. Uh, then they sort of started well and got the lead with a really good goal against Cardiff at the weekend and you felt there was something there until, you know, they ended up obviously uh, falling and, and, and losing in the end. But tonight... Yes, there were certain bits that were OK, but they were, in the end, deservedly beaten by not one of the better teams in the division, just another championship side and a championship side out of form before this. And then in the second half, yeah. when you get fans olaying passes, ironically, when you get the supporters shouting for the, uh, for the manager to go, and, um, and then the, the anger of supporters that we saw very close to us in the Peter Taylor stand as well. Um, well, Chris Hutton, the Forest manager, has made his way out of the dugout. He's coming over to uh, uh, speak to, uh, to the press and the media. Um, he's uh, just going to go and conduct uh, an interview for television first. But uh, Steve Hodge... Um, it, uh, it looks like he's still the manager at the moment. He's certainly coming out to conduct his post-match interview. Yeah, that, but that was an awful long time in the changing room there. So you wonder why normally he'd be out, I don't know, five, ten minutes. That must have been a good 20 minutes there. Because we saw Neil Warnock talking for ages with all the press down below us quite quickly after the game had finished. Um, so we'll wait and see. Obviously, there's, a, there's, the, there's the financial aspect. If, if the club are thinking, you know, if we do sack him then, We've got to pay off him and three or four of the staff, and we don't really want to do that, really. But that that situation, I'm not sure how long his contract is. I think another year. I yeah, think. so I, I assume the owner could probably uh, afford to do that. Uh, but you know, the, obviously, football and finance at the moment is a, is a big issue. But um, at the end of the day, it's all about results, and the, the fans aren't bothered about the fact that we've got to possibly pay him off and, and Paul Trollope off and Stephen Reid off and the rest, and the goalkeeper coach possibly, and then all the backroom staff that come with him. Um, their concern tonight is that we've got one point from our first seven games, which is a dreadful, dreadful start. And no one, I don't think anybody in the worst case scenario saw that start when you saw the you know, fixtures on paper weren't particularly what you frightening fixtures, really. Uh, Bournemouth, the only one, but Blackburn at home and Coventry away and Middlesbrough at home. You know, Stoke away, yeah, difficult, but with what we have, and we thought we'd have a decentish start, but I think the window, to be fair, has killed a lot of people's fire this year there was, there, was, there was absolutely zero in that window to excite anybody in terms of improving the team and the squad and I felt that we came into the season this season and when the, the uh, window ended in a worse place than we were at the back end of last season when the season finished and Amiobi left and all that glut of players left all the older kind of players left but I think the uh, recruitment has got a lot, a, lot of, a lot of questions to ask itself tonight in terms of you know, the, the quality of players we brought in. I mean, time may tell you, if, if, if there's a change made and the new manager comes in and these players become world beaters somehow overnight, then then it was down to the players not playing for the manager. The only time will tell us with that one. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is whether you, um, you know, want Chris Hewitt to stay or not, and it, certainly the noise tonight would suggest the vast majority um, were in the latter category. But certainly what no fan wants is the cycle that Forrest are in at the moment. Uh, a cycle of, uh, and you talk about the financial impact there, and you think of just every year, it seems, and it, of, of, often more than once a year. Um, over the last decade or two changing managers no no fan wants that no no manager clearly wants that because they want time to be able to um, get in and have a few transfer windows and actually build a squad that that they want no chairman or owner wants it because it's expensive and they want to be able to build a squad and if they do end up making this change over the next 24 48 hours it is just yet another one and it's just exhausting Steve Hodge isn't it uh, well it, yeah it is but you know you could say look, look at Watford they change their manager every season every eight months or, and, and it works for them because they bring in good players the recruitment's great and you could say other, other clubs in the championship the manager gets a season and, and that is it and he's moved on I think that's the way the world nowadays you know you don't get too many people get two or three year deal and they get you know time to bed in and, and settle and see what's in the reserves and the youth team and you know, they're given a, a, a rocky patch and they're okay, they're fine. 
that's not the way of the world nowadays in, in football. It's a, serious, it's a proper serious business. There's a lot of money involved. The Premier League is a target for all these teams in the, in the Championship. And someone like Warnock, to be fair, had a OK season last year. And he's here again this year. And he, but he's, he's there this year because probably he's bought that extra year because of his, his CV and his, his career. So Chris might say, well, you know, I've got the same kind of career behind and I've blah, 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 blah. But at the moment, Warnock's, you feel that Warnock's got a, a spirit in his team today and he's got some fight in his team and he's got a little bit of a better team. Not that much, to be fair, but one or two. But that, that Forest team tonight, to, for me, didn't look like a team that was really, really at it, really desperate, apart from Johnson in the second half when he had a spell when he, he really kind of ramped it up and he was, he was buzzing everywhere and he was getting balls in the box and he showed uh, Peltier a clean pair of heels. And he tried to get something going. The crowd got behind him. But that's, that was a 10-minute period. And it wasn't sustained, you know, not just by Johnson, but the whole team have to back him up then. And they have to, run, you know, raise their game and raise their intensity. But I don't think they can. I really don't think they can. I think one of the older players are getting old in this league now. And, you know, I'm not about their team tonight, but they weren't a great team. They were pretty average. They've won one in six before tonight. Um, but their keeper was sparsely shot at today I don't think he made a, a save of, of real note in the game which again is an indictment there's been games this season when we've had no shots on target which should never happen so you know there's some of the things that we've seen this season that are indefensible the, the second goal today was indefensible some of the the, the other keepers mistakes Sam's mistakes this year undefensible and they've, they've cost points and cost confidence and at the moment they're costing the manager um, serious questions about his job um, so you know we, we could talk about it all night David the owners have got to make a decision and they're they giving one more I, I don't know the, 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 for me today looking at the players the last couple of games or well, three or four games I don't think the players are good enough to do what the manager wants and I don't think the style that the manager wants is is pleasing on the eye to what the Forest fans are used to so those two things combined mean you're watching a lot of very average football every week and getting some very average results. Yeah, 18 minutes past 10, uh, match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. That was Steve Hodge. This is David Jackson here at the City Ground. Let's head pitch side and hear from the manager, Chris Hewton, with Colin Frey. Manager in conversation with Colin Frey, pitch side at the City Ground tonight on match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. Um, Steve Hodge, I mean, regardless of... Uh, I should be many supporters listening to this and watching on live on BBC Nottingham Sports Facebook page as well who who were wanting him out. There's one thing you cannot argue with, um, surely, and, and, and that is that no matter what happens, he handles himself with incredible dignity in, in, in answering those questions as he does and praising the fans tonight even, despite having had the amount of stick he's had during that 90 minutes and beyond. Well... He can't come on on air and say you know bad things about the the fans because they're on his back anyway. So he's going to make it if he's manager at the weekend. He's going to make it ten times worse. So he's just batting safe, basically. He's just saying the right things to keep not the fans on side, but the fans not turning any more on him. If he, if he comes out here and slags the fans off, then he is done. So he just he probably answered these questions a million times before. He likes the the word of the use responsibility a lot. Um, and he likes the word that a team's playing in a certain way. He says that one a lot because there is standard go-to lines that that can get him through an interview when he's under pressure like that. And obviously, Colin asking the question about reports that he's set to leave the football club that that I don't know anything about. Um, obviously, he didn't. But no, he's he's always been diplomatic in the way he's answered questions. And uh, I think if he wants to be manager at the weekend, he wants to believe that if he is there then the fans are, are on side and he's not lost any more than he did tonight you know, obviously the team losing tonight was a problem and they, were, they went for him after the second goal um, and like you said that was uncomfortable that would have hurt that's mm. something probably he's not had before I don't think probably in his career and it was loud so you know when you put yourself down there in that technical area as a football manager and there's 25,000 here every week when the goings are good it's great and when the goings are awful that's you accept that as he said you accept it and he's in a great job, uh, a job that many managers would like to have. Yeah. So he won't give it up easily. Maybe diplomacy would have been a better <laughs> word for me to use uh, yeah. in, in, in that instance. Um, but, I mean, the, the big question still, regardless of the fact that he's come out to do this interview, is, is whether he will be in charge at the weekend. Um, and, um, you know, 
the, the rumours certainly are, are doing the rounds whether um, he comes out to do the interview or not and, and they are that um, it, it seems like he, he may well end up being gone by the weekend and uh, in the end Forrest will have a, a bit of searching to do won't they as to as, as to if they do do that as, as to what they go to next um, which is a conversation that you know we'll certainly get to you know in depth once that happens but it's it's a big question isn't it because it, it, it's, it's very well saying let's let's get rid of this manager but the, the big question inevitably is what what are you changing it for um and and that's a huge question at the moment isn't it what well, what do you change it for at the moment john terry this week who'd been rumored for the job distance himself from it would you want a young first time manager in there um dane murphy's got a history of bringing in managers who uh, perhaps unknown certainly when it's at barnsley unknown to many in this country bringing them in and, and and doing a job there people who will buy into them and know his philosophy you wonder if that's the sort of thing that he, he might end up going down do you go down the route of another experienced championship manager when it's not particularly worked over the last 12 months uh, at all with with chris Hutton? what direction do you go in next well, who knows? And that's not my call. That's, that's for the board to, to sit down and think, where have we gone wrong over the last, I don't know, three, four, five years? You look around and see all the teams, what they're up to and where they've been successful. Um, a lot of successful teams like Norwich, you've got Stuart Webber in a few years ago, gone down the, the route of, you know, the director of football and the uh, manager works underneath and together with him. I don't know whether these two can work together um, to bring in the players that, that you, you really want. Um yeah, there's lots of scenarios, you know, like you say, the guy, um, Dave Murphy came from Barnsley and they had, obviously, they've had three or four, Gerhard Struber, um, and now obviously Ismail last year, managers you'd never heard of, they've gone down that route and for Barnsley it's been great for this year, they've had a poor start, um, uh, who knows, but, you know, um, I don't know how strong these rumours are, I don't know, football's full of rumour anyway, but... Um, I'm not sure Colin's been talking to, but he seemed pretty confident in what he was saying that there was... He was set to go, which was mm. which was a, a tough question to ask a manager, but the right question to ask mm. when things are being said and rumours are getting flown around and the manager's there in front of you. That question was right to be asked, and he answered it, to be fair, like you say. Diplomatic, I'll get on with the job, because that's what managers do. I told you, they wouldn't walk away. Managers don't do that. They always think they're one game away from turning it around. And, but that's where sometimes the owner has to say, enough's enough, and... You know, it's my football club and we go in a different direction now, but that's not my conversation. Yeah. OK, Steve Hodge, thank you very much indeed for being with us on Match Night uh, from BBC Radio Nottingham tonight. It is uh, half past ten now. That'll about do things from uh, here at the City Ground. Of course, if anything does happen regarding the uh, manager, you'll hear about it on BBC Radio Nottingham and uh, across our social media on a night when, uh, in the end, Forest were beaten again by Middlesbrough this time. Zinkenagel on halfway, loses out and the ball is fed forward quickly towards Spora, inside right channel, oh it's a fantastic finish from an angle, Andras Spora has smashed it past Ethan Horbath and any thoughts Forrest might have had about their new goalkeeper keeping a clean sheet are extinguished after 24 minutes. It's an absolute hammer of an effort from Andras Spora who was sent through with an early ball after Zinkenagel lost out just inside the Middlesbrough half and it was sent through the inside right channel and finished rapier-like by Andras Spora. 1-0 to Middlesbrough, 24 minutes got Peltier. He sends it further back for Lumley. Lumley smashes it down the pitch towards the left wing. Umbeso is there first. Oh, heavy touch from Horvath, given away. Nightmare for the Forest goalkeeper. And tucked in by Onel Hernandez. It is an absolute disaster on his debut for Ethan Horvath. Sent back to him by Lower Cumbe, so awful touch. Showed far too much of it to Onel Hernandez, who raced in, jinked past him, having taken the ball off him and slotted into an empty net. 2-0 Middlesbrough, and the goalkeeping change made by Chris Hewton has not worked. And Forest fans chanting at their own manager that he's going to get sacked in the morning as Middlesbrough go 2-0 ahead. That's it from here. We'll be back on Saturday with Match Day from Huddersfield. The Late Show is next. <laughs>